There is this cinematic technique which is called a dolly zoom and it's used in films to enhance the drama of the moment and the way that it works is that the camera will move forwards or backwards and at the same time the focal length will change to adjust the image. So I made this demo scene to explain how this works and on the top here you can see that as the camera moves forward the focal length decreases and we get a more wide angle image. Down here you can see the result of the camera and we get this kind of eerie effect. But what's interesting is that the overall composition of the image doesn't change very much with regards to the subject. The width of the face, the height of the face is still approximately the same. And it turns out that this artifact is very useful when it comes to camera matching. So I created a free add-on that allows you to create this dolly zoom motion inside a Blender. And I'm going to put a link in the description, but if you go here to code and then download a zip file, you can download that to your computer. And then over in Blender, you can go to edit, preferences, install, go to the place where you downloaded that add-on, press install, and then make sure to enable it by pressing this button here. And then in order to use the dolly zoom, which acts on the active camera, we can press F3 to search and search for dolly zoom. And it's here. And if I press this, you can see that the camera starts to move in relation to the 3D cursor. And we can see what this looks like from inside the camera as well if we go to the camera icon here, view. And instead of searching for dolly zoom each time using this F3 menu, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on dolly zoom and I'm going to add it to my quick favorites. And this means that I can access it just by pressing Q. And you can see here the effect of the dolly zoom from inside the perspective of the camera. And this works relative to the 3D cursor. So if I had an object that was in the background, for example, and I placed my 3D cursor on it by pressing Shift right click, now the dolly zoom would operate relative to that 3D cursor position. And similarly, if I had the object in the foreground, I right clicked on it with the cursor and then used the dolly zoom it would be operating relative to that 3D cursor position. So you can think of the 3D cursor as a pivot around which the dolly zoom is occurring. So I want to show you a practical application of how this can be used in 3D for camera matching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my lamp and my cube in the default scene. I'm going to click on my camera and I'm going to go over here to this tab, which is the data tab. I'm going to expand the background image section, enable it, add an image, and I'm going to open up this image this image of a vaulted hallway, and that's going to be the background image for my camera. So if I press the camera icon here again, I can go inside. I can see that that image has been stretched across. So what I want to do is change the stretch method to crop. And I also want to press this front button so that the image comes in front of the three-dimensional user interface. So with my camera selected, I'm going to go over to this little tab here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to set my camera location to 000. zero, zero. So I'm going to click and drag across all of these fields and press zero. Enter, and I'm going to set my rotation to 90 and my Z rotation to 0. And now if I go outside of the camera again, see that the camera is at the origin and it's facing along this Y axis. Also, you can press Alt-G if your camera goes off axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the camera up to approximately the camera height. So I'm going to press G and Z, and I'm going to type in 1.7 to set the height to 1.7 meters. And now if I go inside the camera again, press on the camera icon here, you can see that the grid that we see on the floor is approximately aligned with the grid that we see in the image. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a kind of virtual tile on the floor that we can use to calibrate this camera fully. So I'm going to go back outside my camera again by pressing the middle mouse button. And I'm going to, with my cursor in the center of the world, so if yours isn't, press Shift C. I'm going to add by pressing Shift A, a mesh and a plane. I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing Tab. And I'm going to scale that to the scale of half by pressing S and then 0.5. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to inset the face by pressing I. And you can see that that makes a little square on the inside. And I'm going to type in 0.1. That's going to inset it by a factor of 0.1. Then I'm going to press G, press Z, and then move it up on the Z axis by amount of 0.05. That's going to create a little tile for us. And then I'm going to go to object mode by pressing tab. I'm going to go over here to the modifiers section. I'm going to add a modifier called an array. Here I'm just typing to search for array. And I'm going to set the count to 20. And then I'm going to add another array modifier. And this time I'm going to set the count to 75. And instead of using the x axis, which we're going to set to zero, I'm going to use the y axis. 
and that's going to make the tiles extend off in this direction. So what I'm going to do now is press G to move this on the X axis by pressing G and then X. And I'm going to press G and then Y to move it a little bit on the Y axis. And now if I press the camera icon here and go back inside the camera, you can see that we've got some tiles overlaid into the 3D scene, but they're way too big compared to the actual tiles that we're dealing with. So I think what I'm going to do is um, put my 3D cursor here in the middle. Then I'm going to go to press the full stop button use the 3D cursor as the scaling point, and I'm going to press S to scale down my tiles. I'm going to scale them down until they're approximately the same as the ones that we see in the image. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to right click on my camera, and I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to see what's going on. And I can see that they're not lining up in every single place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press G to move my camera around until one little bit is lining up. So I'm focusing on this point here, trying to make that line up. So you can see now corner of the tile is in the corner of the tile in the 3D and in the photograph. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and right click and replace my 3D cursor at that location. And what that lets me do is it lets me use the cursor as a pivot point for the camera. And you remember that this was used for the dolly zoom, but we're going to use it now just for a simple rotation. So I'm going to press R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis. I'm just going to try and line up the vanishing point of the image. So you can see here, these tiles in the distance are kind of lining up with the tiles that we see in the scene. And I'm going to press R and then X, and then X again to rotate on the local X axis of the camera. And that's going to allow me to line them up a little bit better, hopefully. I can see that they need a little bit more tweaking, something like that. That looks like my lines are correct. So it looks like I've got my sort of X axis alignment approximately correct. My Y axis alignment, it seems like the period of the tiles is slightly different. And this is where the dolly zoom comes in very useful because we can use the dolly zoom to basically change the perspective without changing any of the other factors in the image. So I'm going to press Q to get to my quick favorites again. And I'm going to press dolly zoom. And you can see that what that does is it lets me scale, almost like scaling the perspective out into the space. And if I hold down shift, I can do more fine control. And what I'm doing is I'm just scaling out this dolly zoom so that the tiles line up on this depth axis or the Y axis of my scene. So I'm just going to keep adjusting that until it looks like they're in the right repetition. And I think also I might need to do a little bit of um, scaling overall. I might just select the tiles and then scale them a little bit as well. Yeah, so that looks like they're lining up a little bit better like that. It won't be possible to get them perfect because there's always going to be some variation in the way that this ground works. But yeah, there you can see we've approximately lined up the tiles with those on the floor. And from here, you can do other things, like you can start to build the vaulted ceiling, for example. So if I were to um, place my 3D cursor here in the middle of the scene, and then I were to create a circle, which I can then rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees. This is R, X, and then 90. You can then lift that up by pressing G and Z. Move that up towards the ceiling. And then if I press tab to go into edit mode, and then press full stop and scale my pivot point to the median point, Press S to scale, and you can see that we can start to make the vaulted ceiling. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these vertices, delete them. And then you can see here that this line is pretty much in the position of the vault on the ceiling. So if I were to press E to extrude, then Y to move it on the Y axis, I could extrude that down by the length of one of these panels. And then if I press Shift R, I can repeat that process copying it all the way back to the end of the space. So you can see how once you've calibrated the space to a regular object such as a tile, you can use that as a means to start to reconstruct a three-dimensional scene. So I also wanted to show you this more complex image match, which is a photograph of the port of the city of Beirut. And you can see here, I've got a good, relatively detailed model of the city, which I'll put a link to in the description. And this image, and the idea is that we can use the urban landscape here that we see in the photograph, the dolly zoom method, and camera matching in order to match this camera location here inside of the port of Beirut. So looking at the 3D here, the first thing I need to do is add my camera. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to go to camera. And that camera has gone somewhere in the scene very far away. But what we want to do is just bring it to this point of view. So I'm going to go to view, align view, and then I'm going to go to align active camera to view. And that's going to put the camera where my view was. But you'll notice that something weird has happened to the 3D. It's all kind of been clipped and cut off. And that's because this is a very large environment urban environment and our camera clip is set to something that's too low. So over here in the um, camera properties, I'm going to set the end clip to 10,000 and that's going to reveal the rest of the scene. Um, but you'll notice that there's also a lot of this um, glitchy Z fighting that's going on here in the port. So that's because the clip start is a little bit too low. So I'm going to set the clip start to something like 10. And you can see that that clears up a lot of the glitchiness that we were dealing with before. 
So now with our camera in roughly the right place, or at least available to us, um, I'm going to go over here to the background image, turn it on, add an image, and then for my image I'm going to add the picture of the Port of Beirut. And I'm going to set that to front and crop, and that's going to sort out the aspect ratio and make sure that the image is overlaid onto the 3D. So now what we can do is we can start to move this camera around and try to line it up with the 3D, which is a little bit tricky just using grab. And I want to recommend this function here, which is the walk navigation. So if you go to view, navigation, and then walk navigation, you can look around as if you were on a tripod, but you can also use the WASD keys to move around as if you were walking through a scene. And if these aren't going very fast for you, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to increase and decrease the speed of walking. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of walk around in the air here until I've got my camera kind of in the right place. And I'm looking for buildings, objects that line up with what I see in the image. And as I move through the space, hopefully I'm going to find something that's going to line up. And I'm not finding anything yet. I'm a little bit too close to the port there. So yeah, here we go. I think I'm getting close now. You can see they've got this kind of like rectangular shaped building here, which seems to be lining up with something in the image. And when you're trying to line it up, it's useful to change the opacity here, fade it in and out. You can also see that there's this kind of road intersection here, which looks like it's lining up quite nicely. This little intersection here lines up with the 3D model. So that's a good kind of starting point for our alignment. So you can see this island here as well. This island here is the one that we see in the 3D model as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and shift that over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my 3D cursor in the scene there. So I'm going to shift, right click, and now that's my pivot. And what I can do is I can press S to scale. You can see that as I scale, other things in the image start to line up. So you can see this building here, this square thing, starts to become more closely aligned with the 3D model, which is nice. But then if we look to the horizon, we can see that the grain silo is way off. It's not really lining up. So what I'm going to do is put the cursor again now on this square building. And this time I'm going to rotate on the local X axis of the camera. So I'm going to press R, X, and X. And as I do that, you should be able to see that the background starts to line up and there you can see that the grain silo is starting to find its place but it's a little bit off on the x-axis here or from the left to right so what i can do then is i can rotate around the z-axis again rotating around the pivot of this camera and if i do that just right you can see that the grain silo now lines up but it's kind of the wrong size and this is where camera matching gets really hard because this is where you have to sort of start playing with the focal length and playing with the focal length is really annoying because if you've tried ch changing it but if if you've tried doing it before you'll notice that it just changed the focal length and all of your previous alignments is kind of screwed up. This is where the dolly zoom comes in really handy so I'm going to press Q to access my dolly zoom and what you can see is that that kind of subtly changes the scene in a way that doesn't lose all of my previous transformations. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing the focal length of the dolly zoom until the grain silo in the image looks about the same size as the grain silo in the 3D so I need to go a little bit further I think so I'm going to dolly zoom again and now I can see that it's not necessarily in exactly the right place, but it looks like it's about the right size. So now all I need to do is rotate on my local x-axis. So again, that's R, X, and X. And now if I rotate on R, X, and X, and then rotate on R and Z, you can see that the grain silo is lining up quite nicely with the image. And you can see that it's probably resolved a few other things as well. Like you can see this avenue here in the city starting to line up quite nicely with the image. And what else can we see? It looks like some of this stuff in the foreground has gone a little bit off, but that's okay because we can fix that. It looks like this here here is lining up nicely. So what we need to do is basically sort of iteratively adjust this until we get something that starts to look right. And what we can do is we can move our um, we can move our 3D cursor to another position here. So if we're happy with the grain silo, we can put the 3D cursor on the grain silo and then start to scale relative to that. So now what you can see is that as I scale relative to the grain silo, we can line up other parts of the image, like this traffic island here. And we might need to do another bit more of the Z rotation. And then we might see that other things start to misalign a little bit. So it's a case of kind of tweaking and tweaking until you get it the way you want it. It's still a very handcrafted method, but using that dolly zoom gives you a big advantage in terms of being able to manage the orientation of the camera. So here I can see that if I dolly zoom relative to the grain silo here in the port, I can get a much nicer transformation with regards to this traffic island. And you can see now that also this building here that's in the midground is also starting to line up quite nicely. So if we increment this process enough times, we eventually get to a um, 
a solution for the camera, which is close. And you can see this camera here was the one I, I matched earlier. And you can see that we're kind of converging on that as a solution. So I think we're getting close. So here what I'm doing is I'm rotating on the x-axis and I'm dolly zooming and I'm rotating on the local x-axis until we have something that looks pretty good and I think now we're pretty close so if I change the transparency on this image yeah you can see that we have something which is approaching a good camera match of the city. So this is an example of how you can do this in a more advanced setup where you're not just dealing with a rectilinear tile. So the dolly zoom the add-on that I created um, is free but it's limited in its capabilities and if you're really interested in going further down this process of using Dolly Zoom to camera match or for other cinematic purposes, I definitely recommend this add-on here, Dolly Zoom and Truck Shift. And Truck Shift is a um, ability to change the lens shift of the camera whilst also having the camera position compensate. So it allows you to kind of get a little bit further into this process and it's a lot more polished. <laughs>